Hi, my name's Alan and I'm going to take you through our berm design process. The design and specifications of a berm can vary dramatically depending on its purpose. When we first started looking at berms in general, we didn't realise the difference between them. And most of the designs that we were looking at were in fact landscaping berms which look like this. They are usually asymmetrical in shape and consist of a topsoil, on clay, on granular core stratigraphy. The highly porous core facilitates drainage which is exactly the opposite of what we are looking for given the fact that we are designing a water retention berm. Initially we thought that the purpose of a water retention berm was to fully resist the flow of water, much like a concrete dam. However, the true purpose of a water retention berm is not to resist the flow of water but rather to control the water that flows through it. This is one of our design solutions for what our water retention berm should look like. The water is here on this side and it consists of a topsoil layer with vegetation on top of a sandy strata with a clay core and a key. The clay core is the controlling factor of this berm. It is compacted to a very specific standard and subsequently has the highest density and lowest porosity that we can achieve on site. However, much, after much deliberation, we decided that, that this type of dam is more complex than what was required, so we decided to switch to a homogeneous dam, which is made entirely of the low permeability material that we would have used in our core in the first design. So how do we create the berm? A typical construction process of a berm like this would involve creating and compacting in layers, otherwise known as lifts in the soil mechanics world, usually 300 millimetres and compacted by either a smooth drummed vibrating or a sheep's foot roller. Each layer would have to be monitored and tested by the on-site engineer to ensure appropriate moisture content and adequate compaction has been achieved. Let's look at the water flow through the berm. We can monitor the flow rate through the different regions of the berm via flow nets. Computer software based on either finite difference or finite element methods is widely available for the construction of flow nets. A flow net consists of flow or streamlines and equipotential lines. Streamlines track the path that a water molecule would travel and the equipotential lines represent zones of equal pressure or head. The fundamentals to be satisfied in a flow net is that every intersection between a flow line and an equipotential line must be at right angles to each other. Additionally, we can draw our flow net by drawing what we call circular squares, as you can see here. This line here is called the phreatic surface, and it is imperative that the drop along the phreatic surface between each equipotential line must be the same. Flow nets illustrate potential problem areas too. If the foundation soil is more permeable than the dam, then the control of under seepage is essential. Under seepage can be virtually eliminated by means of a grout curtain, or reduced by the addition of a low permeability key as we have here. The key pushes the subsurface flow deeper into the ground which as you can see increases the distance that the water molecules have to travel. As a result of this they have far less energy when they reach the other side if at all. A suitable filter must always be constructed at the discharge surface in an embankment dam. The function of the filter is to keep the seepage entirely within the dam itself. Water seeping out onto the downstream slope would result in the gradual erosion of the slope called piping. The filter is designed on the basis of the grading curve of the soil that it is going to protect. This is because the filter pores must be small enough to prevent particles from being carried in from the adjacent soil, as well as being of a high enough permeability to ensure free drainage of water that enters the filter. I'm now going to hand you over to Kevin who's going to take you through the failure modes.